on moving our chess club again. Embrace change to master it. Introduction about this. Hobbies, clubs, and sports are extracurricular activities that help us balance our active lives. However, how do you cope with change when it is suddenly thrown into a mix? As changes affect each person differently, Kirill Kokola will discuss a holistic approach that also promotes better chances of success. Please welcome Kirill Kokola. Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, greetings. We all love our activities, hobbies, and lifestyles. Think about the time when you drove to that music concert or prepared your favorite dish, started singing in the rain, or even embracing skipping in the gym. It's a true statement that creating some balance around these activities will amount to a balanced lifestyle. So is it necessary for us then to manage change? If so, should change be managed actively? These are the two questions I'm going to try and attempt to answer throughout the speech today. I will firstly start by answering the questions and going through a brief story, and I will try to highlight the approach that Srini talked about, the holistic approach for change management. Namely, address the symptoms of change, identify the cause for change, and try to treat the cause. Once again, the holistic approach is address the symptoms of change, identify the cause for change, try to treat the cause. Let's get to the obvious answers. Yes, you need to manage change. And yes, you need to manage it proactively. In 2010, I started working for Hewlett Packard. Right off the bat, I realized that a lot of the employees had some affinity to activities. One of my activities was chess. I realized there was mutual interest between a lot of the employees myself and the game of chess. And that evolved into the larger interest of playing chess collectively with HP groups. The next year, I helped form the HP Alpharetta Chess Club. And we also had corporate backing and sponsorship. In the beginning, we were a very loosely held club that met on Tuesdays to play sporadic games for fun. But quickly, we started absorbing chess federation rules that increased our prospects, the interest in the game, and our numbers had an uptick. In the first two months alone, we moved our venue four times to accommodate management needs. That's not easy, because we were a nascent club. But at the end of that second month, we got a memo saying, you need to move your venue or shut down the chess club because you're causing disruptions at work. That's not good. That's a red flag. As club leaders and diligent employees, we can have that. We also wanted to align right away with change. Because if you don't go proactively about change, change will happen to you. You will be an obstacle in the course of change, which is not good. We started surveying the root causes, taking note of all the facts, the venues, the timing schedules, and also decided to promote chess under employee wellness. One of the things that we realized was we had to take a survey because we had a lot of members that work from home. So right away, our VP of the club figured out that the cafeteria is the best venue. As club president, I determined that Wednesday afternoons are the best it's a sweet spot, essentially, to get as many attendees as you can. Our media relations officer, Richard, went ahead and reserved a booth during health seminar so that we could talk to everybody about the benefits of chess. And we shared all this in a communication plan, down to the summaries of the results for polling, saying, here's where members would like to attend. Here are the timings. And I also put in 
our second rendition of our newsletter. The VP approved it in two days, which is really good news. When the time came for us to actually make the move, we were surprised that the move was smooth. Not one person showed up in the old hallway and said, hey, where are you guys? Everybody was there in the cafeteria, three rows, 30 seats reserved. We were ready to play. But what we learned in the process of change was we could be better. Firstly, we figured out that we needed more chess sets. We also had to teach people how to play the game who didn't know how to play the game. So we had to standardize how to play chess in the club and also address others who are getting bored with chess puzzles, so on and so forth. But in summary, the change was great. That's because we planned the change by taking care of a site survey, looking at all of the facts, variables, and then measuring the need for change by soliciting member input, asking others what would they like to see, and then communicating at each stage, saying we have two weeks to move, here's what we're planning, getting, a, getting authorization for that move, but getting people reminders so that they're so that they can manage their anxiety around the movement. To give you some numbers on what this change meant, we had over a hundred unique signups. Hundred or plus folks signed up to find out more about what chess is, how it can help them relax, how they can perform under pressure, all of those things. We also hosted our first online chess tournament on chess.com, which spanned over a full year. And we also had an actual tournament take part, take place on campus. This really connected chess at the HP Alpharetta Club to chess in other places globally. Again, all great news. And what we did was we addressed the symptom of change, which was this perception of chess messing around with people's work distorting that view of chess being disrupted. But that wasn't the cause. What was the cause? As I found out more about the cause, it was clear that folks could not relate to what chess meant for them, how would they advance their career, how would they talk to others playing chess, because now all of a sudden they look very technical. And that's where the education came. We played some chess movies, such as Finding Bobby Fischer, hosted a chess hour, played puzzles. And that showed people how to play chess with their children and with each other. So in closing, I'd like to highlight this story as an example of how to manage chess, the anxiety around change, with a change communication plan, proper communication, and getting everybody on the same page. Research shows that folks who embrace change with communication end up reaping the benefits of change. And I hope all of you also embrace changes in your life to eventually master them.